Good to go? Yes. All right, wonderful. All right, hey Luke, hey Stacey. Um, I'm gonna get going here, 8.32. Luke, can you give me a thumb up if you can see my screen okay? Thank you yep. so much, appreciate it. All right, so tonight I'm gonna to lead a discussion of an overview of the Isogenics business model. I'm gonna talk about my why, why I got started, why I continue to do this, and why it will continue to be a part of what I do in regards to being the CEO of my family. So the two main things that you're gonna get out of tonight are the following. Number one, I aspire to give you a, a great understanding of the business model. And number two, I'm gonna invite you, not just during this call, but post call, to reflect on current behaviors. Are they getting you to where you want to be? Um, and I'm gonna encourage you to take action which is consistent with the best version of yourself. So I tend to go on little rants, so my intent is good here. So um, just bear with me, the accent sounds really good right now, you'll probably get sick of it in two or three minutes and that's okay too. So focus less on the sound, more on the content. And um, whoever referred you to the call here tonight, I would encourage you, Luke, to connect with them once you are done. And if you also want to reach out to me, I'm happy to, to help answer any questions, but would encourage you to reach out to the person who connected you. Uh, Stacy, I know you, and I think someone else has joined. I think it was Kim. Um, all right, welcome, Kim. So those are the two main objectives tonight. Uh, let me just move this out of the way. This is, you guys are on the... Okay, perfect. So first of all, I'm going to start here. What this is not, this is not a free lunch. It's not a free dinner. Uh, obviously, this is not a handout. You don't get, you, we get, you don't get something for nothing here. Um, but you are going to hear integrity throughout. I lead with integrity. Um, I would much rather do that. And I know that the proof is in the pudding. It's easy to say that on a, a phone call on a Wednesday night, but I tend to lead with that. And it's one of the reasons why I was, I kind of sat in the cheap seats with Isogenics for a year or so. I was trying to test this out, probe, look, listen, pay attention. Uh, and everything I'm going to share tonight in my experience, this word right here is not just a word. This is something that everyone on this, not on this line and everyone on the team, which I'm part of, um, this is a constant. So uh, I'm not gonna talk tonight about aloe or ashwagandha or any of these other crazy cool things that are out there. That's not me, I'm not that guy. I'm the guy who looks at this from a service orient, a service mindset, and also from a business mindset. So that's where I'm gonna uh, emphasize heavily this evening is the business mindset. That's not to minimize the good here and the quality of the nutrition, the quality of the model, I'm looking at this as a business model and specifically what can I do as the CEO of my family to put things in my favor and our favor and redirect money that I'm already spending in a way that builds an income producing asset for me. I'm into building systems and building income producing assets. So that's the lens I'm going to take tonight. But again, that does not mean that I'm not caring about human beings. That's a given. It doesn't mean I'm not caring about being integral. Uh, acting with integrity, that's a given, but my lens tonight is gonna to be more on the business, so I wanted to start with that there, okay? First of all, who am I? Um, married, father to four young children, my wife Julie in the picture, eldest daughter Claire on the right, our son Ryan in the middle, and then we went back for a third child after a couple of years, and the big guy decided to, we had a coupon apparently, kind of a buy one, get one, Luke, so we had twins who came along, so that's, that's my why right here, that's my team. And um, I, I obviously care about them, I love them, and my legacy is not just you know, the four children in that picture right there, it's everyone I interact with, trying to be loving, trying to be kind, trying to do the right thing. And this may be for some people, it may not be, but my intent here is good. So that's the why behind why I do this. Um, I recently walked away, excuse me, I recently ran away from a 15 year corporate career in the pharmaceutical industry great company I work with, some great memories, some great people. It, what left me uneasy and where I eventually got to was I was so heavily focused on one source of income, one company. And early 40s, I was looking at the people in the company who were quote unquote successful, who were maybe 10 or 12 years further ahead of me. And these folks were tired. These folks were miserable. These folks were walking around with a little ear pod thing in, talking constantly. Um, and I looked at that and for the last two or three years, that has not, it didn't appeal to me and I didn't like that track. So that was one angle that left me uneasy. And the other angle was around the fact that the great medicines and great companies doing wonderful things for human beings in various disease states. And I see the value in that. 
However, is there more we can do earlier on in the life cycle, people, as opposed to waiting until they're 55 or 60, and in my experience, waiting until they have COPD and they, they can't breathe very well. So then, hey, we have a great medicine or some medicines for you. Hey, there's a value there, but can we do something earlier on in the life cycle of these human beings that not only aligns with my values, but maybe intercepts and changes, changes the path? We can never truly eliminate disease, but what we can do is stack the numbers in our favor. So those two aspects there, I wrestled with the last two or three years, and then I knew in the summer that if I didn't jump now, yes, during the pandemic, if I didn't jump now, I was not going to. So I walked away in June, and I've been building some other businesses since that time. So that's me, that's who I am, that's why I walked. Um, and obviously I'm very grateful to be here today. I believe that every day is a gift, but I have aspirations to contribute on a different level. So that's the intro. So I'm gonna highlight for the next two or three slides, and I'm not gonna belabor the points, but I will, I'll make it nice and clear. People have a need for money, okay? We know the consumer habits are changing. We know that business and industry are changing. Those three statements were true and valid before Corona virus came into our world you know either earlier this year or late last year it was valid before then it's even more valid now so i won't go through the whole thing here and read every every word on the slide but basically what this is telling us is that we have a significant debt problem you've got people working one two three jobs you've had the explosion of side gigs in the last four or five years whether it's internet related car sharing vacation home you know sharing uh, trading rooms, renting rooms, whatever it is, there are people looking for different ways to earn revenue outside of the day job. And there are people looking to build lives outside of that typical structure that we, many people, excuse me, not we, but many people kind of stumble into. Okay, you go to college, then you work 40 years, uh, then you keep 40% of your income and you work 40 hours a week. That 40, 40, 40 model um, seems to be becoming more and more redundant. And for me personally, I believe that with every day being precious, I, I want to find a way. How can I build my life? Um, how can I build work around life as opposed to build life around my work? And I just got uneasy as I, the last several years having to ask somebody to, can I take a vacation in July? Now, I don't say that from an ego perspective. I say it from a self-respect standpoint. There are kids out there doing amazing jobs, flipping stuff on Amazon, right? There are people creating Uber and Airbnb and various other business models out there. Uh, that are, they're building a life, they're building their work around their life. So this is something that has intrigued me. So what this slide is saying is that there are many opportunities out there. People have a desire for more revenue to come in, especially revenue that does not demand that you check into an office from nine until five or eight until five. There are other ways to create value and to build a system and to earn revenue. Um, so that's what this slide is telling you right here. And that last point there about 40 million is living in housing they cannot afford. I don't even know where to start with that. I'm not an economist, but the, the, the challenges that people are having for money right now are clear. They were clear pre-COVID and they are even more clear at this point. What this slide right here is telling us is about the value and the impact of $100,000 annual salary and take home in five metropolitan areas across, across the country. So you can see if we take Houston, um, you can add in your salary needed to buy a home just under 62,000, average credit card debt, $6,700, and the monthly take home from $100,000 is 6,300. So again, $100,000 in my lifetime was always a big threshold. If you made $100,000, wow, that's a big deal. You have quote unquote succeeded and you're doing fine. Now what this data shows you from these five metropolitan areas, not the rest of the country, these five, it shows you that it truly isn't that much truly isn't that much and again what it speaks to is how quickly this money can go you know on rent transportation insurance clothing food etc etc so the point here is that people need a bit more take home pay the challenge is how can we build a system where people can bring in a bit more money again but not there are only 24 hours in the day so how can we build a system and create a way to bring revenue in uh, without sacrificing more time so what I'm going to talk about here, I'm, and I'm going to move into it a bit more, excuse me, my slide crept there. What I'm going to talk about a bit more here is simply redirecting some of your food budget. When I started in Isagenix in March of 2018, I was actually surprised 
uh, Melissa Hanolt, the person who enrolled me, challenged me because I was very skeptical. And I said, I don't know, I don't know, expensive, cost, da 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 da. You know, I threw out the various things, which are really just defenses, defenses for me to say, prove it, prove it, prove it. So when I actually looked at what my family of six at that time spent, it was about $800, $850 a month is what we spent. And then when I started to look at this, uh, the isogenics thing and say, well, in, instead of the waffles, we'll do the shakes for breakfast. Instead of the, the sandwiches and the bag of chips for six people, because there's six of us in the house, remember, instead of doing that every lunchtime, what we'll do, we'll do a smoothie for lunch and then we'll do some little chips. So basically what this model in essence is telling you is redirect your spend away from Walmart away from Sam's Club, away from BJ's, Costco, whoever, whoever, redirect some of that spend away from those places and towards isogenics. Now, again, I would encourage you, if you haven't, to look at the nutritional value here and the quality of the food. I'm not going to go into that tonight, but what I am saying is that I, I wouldn't be advocating and putting a stake in the ground saying this is quality nutrition if it wasn't true. It is true, and I'm saying it, and we have scientists, we have Harvard Harvard doctors who advocate and have joined this company because of the quality of the nutrition and the mission. So again, I'm not going to go into the nutrition too much, but it's amazing. So this is talking about redirecting your food budget away. And now present day, what is it? October of 2020, I spend about $220 a month on shakes instead of pancakes for breakfast, multivitamins I get from isogenics for my wife, myself, and my four kids, instead of buying them at Target, Walmart, or wherever. And then we, we will get protein bars, and we may throw in a couple other products there each month when we tweak our order based on what's going on. Like for this month, for example, we ordered one of the supplements, the immune booster, we're getting into the cold flu, scary flu season, whatever. So we feel that's a value and that's a good move for us. So that's what we do currently. And I've been doing it for two years. So it's really redirecting food away from these other organizations over to isogenics and building the income producing asset there, which I'll get into in a moment. So some background, um, excuse me. So a couple of reasons why to partner with isogenics and I'm not gonna go into all of these in great detail. I think many of them are, are self-explanatory. I will highlight the fourth one there. No artificial caps on earning potential. Network marketing gets a bad rap. It gets a bad rap where people say, well, is it a scam or it's a pyramid? And the answer is no, it's not a scam. No, it's not a pyramid. Pyramid is corporate America where the CEO earns $58 million and gets a three trillion dollar bonus and stock options this year while the people in the lower end who do the work and whose efforts and labor are being leveraged those people make less so i kind of get on my high horse on that one but i want to jump right in and say that there are no limits on your earning potential with isogenics yes you can see the asterisk it does require you to do work this is not a free lunch and yes this is no guarantee but there are numerous examples, one of whom is on, the, on the, the call with us right now who are doing amazingly well with isogenics because she works exceptionally hard, she's consistent, and she comes from that service mindset. So I wanted to mention that point there. Um, the incredible nutrition and results, I'm not gonna belabor that uh, too much. Um, I will go back to time flexibility and leverage. A question, and it's a rhetorical question, and I'll ask it again at the end, but if you could create your own system would you meaning a life system would it be the same system and the same structure that you have currently now i don't know what everyone on this line does in their full-time career but what i did was i i did undergrad i went to graduate school because truthfully i didn't know what else i wanted to do and the job market wasn't very good um, then I worked in a corporate, I, I started a company for two years. I did that and sold it. Then I wanted the safety of a corporate job. because I was getting married and I didn't want to be working 85 hours a week. I did the corporate job. I made it through three or four different layoffs. I progressed up the company. I made it to my early forties and I was tired. And like I told you earlier, I looked ahead 10, 12, 13 years. And those people who were quote unquote successful, they were tired. They looked miserable. They were out of shape. They were unhappy their relationship with their husband, spouse, husband, wife, kids, family wasn't great. They weren't spending time doing what they wanted to do. So my question would be, if you could build your own system, what would it be? And if you haven't engaged in the exercise, I would encourage you because you've got a blank piece of paper right there. And I did this exercise in the summer about, okay, I've walked away from corporate. What do I want this job to look like? I want to build a system and have an income producing asset that helps, my, helps me take care of my family from a nutritional perspective. And it helps me have the freedom to know that this past Monday, I got a check for $750. Okay, that is not life-changing money, but it's $750. 
is $750 that I got because I was brave enough to have conversations with people over the last several months. People were brave enough and trusted me enough to try the nutrition and people are having great experience and have a 90% retention rate. So those who start these products tend to stay with the products because they're good. So I wanted to emphasize time, flexibility and leverage because I'm a big programming guy. And I think that as I have deprogrammed over the last couple of years and especially the last few months, this is an asset and this is a company that I am completely aligned with in regards to their nutrition, how they treat the people who, like myself and the others on the line here, um, who advocate for these products and they truly want to help people, free people from physical and financial pain. And if there is a statement that summarizes isogenics, that is it. Free people from physical and financial pain. That's a mission I can get around. I can I can stand with, I can get on board with that. And it's a mission that's been validated over the last couple of years with everything I have seen. So this slide right here, Isogenics has been around for 18, 19 years, family owned, currently operating in 26 markets globally. So again, when I think of my previous world and you may or may not be able to relate, we had a territory. Uh, my territory was 60 square miles, metropolitan Charlotte, Everything that happened in that territory was my responsibility. Everything that happened. But if something happened in Winston-Salem, but I influenced it, I got, there was no financial benefit to me there. There was a moral benefit and there's an ethical benefit. And again, there's an integrity piece here. I'm going to do good regardless. But the point I'm trying to make here is that you're, that there are no territorial boundaries with isogenics. So you know somebody in Australia or you know somebody in Holland or the UK or Canada, boom, all of a sudden you can be A, doing good and helping them by showing them this nutrition if, and if it fits with them, great. You could then earn revenue from that. So there's, my point is there's, there is no territorial boundaries, which is a monumental benefit and something that people don't often think about. Uh, the other points there, trust and respect, that's all verified and it's not isogenics being a peacock and saying, hey, we're trusted and respected. This is third party verification and others saying it. Uh, obviously, the, the altruistic point here, money to charity, I think is important that you can see that and read up more on that as well. And then the journey to zero waste as we try to become more sustainable as an organization and as a planet, that's something that is important as well. So what I'm going to jump into in this next section for the last seven or eight minutes is really about, okay, so how does the system work? You've shown me the problem. I've given you some background on me. I've got my high horse about, you know, certain things with a company okay how do i improve my finances all right so here's what you do first step number one you set up an account financially no cost here the only cost here the cost of entry here is almost deprogramming and leaving your ego aside and saying i'm going to give this a try that's the cost of entry so you set up an account takes 10 minutes email address name free boom then you're rolling in order to advocate and sell the products like you would if you're selling if you're a, an amazon seller you know you got these fba these filled by amazon folks who do a great job selling it there's an, a there's a fee there there's a fee here so 29 dollar fee to start to sell the products all right at this point right here i'm going to build a couple of slides here i'm going to bring your attention to the bottom left you'll see a nice circle there some some key terms i'm going to read those once but then i'm going to ask you to forget them but it's important that i raise them first one is pib that's product interrupt introductory bonus that means that for every person that I introduce to this company who starts, I get, I get a paycheck. I get $100 or $50 or 150 whatever it is. There are double PIBs. If, you, if a couple, three or four different people come on in a given week, you get an additional bonus. Rank advancement, rank advancement bonuses. As you build out a team and refer and refer and refer more and more and that builds, you advance, you get money for that as well. And then the commission week would be Monday through Sunday. So the last statement before I ask you to forget that for now is that you get paid for the, the first time they order, you get paid for the repeat orders. They don't, after 30 days or six months, they don't have some arbitrary timeline where they say, you don't get paid anymore, Martin, because, uh, you know, because we, the company decide. No, you do the work, you bring the people in, that's your responsibility. You get the credit for that from day one until day infinity, when that person decides to no longer be here or moves on or whatever. So that's, I wanted to mention that point here. This isn't a one and done. You get paid for the first time, you get paid the second time, the third time, and as your network builds and your influence builds and the economic value of the good you do builds, you get paid according to that, okay? So um, 
you've got this lady in the middle here. We're going to say she's, can I give her a name? Mary. You've got Mary in the middle. Mary's going to bring on a couple of folks to the team. Um, we're going to say one on the left, one on the right. She does that in the same week. She gets a little financial kicker right there. Those people that Mary brings on, they start referring people just like you would with Amazon um, or just like you would. And I've got some examples I'll jump to in a minute. You know, people refer the, the most valuable aspect of um, marketing is and always has been referrals and word of mouth. It always has been. It is always true. It will remain true. People distrust the TV, the computer, whatever. People trust their friends. They trust referrals. So that has and always will be the most valuable source of marketing. So really here, as people build out this network and the team, you can see this influence grow right here. Um, and I'm going to jump back to Mary. Mary in the middle here. You right there. Every single person who is ordering on this network, and I built it out, every single person ordering, that money, a portion of that money flows right back through Mary. So the conversation that Mary had with the person on the left and the person on the right, and they decided to start and try this, as they have started to refer and build people out too, you can see the economic value of this unit. And I would encourage everyone to think about, when was the last time you made a referral to a restaurant? Okay, think about, when was the last time you made a referral to the restaurant? Have you referred to that restaurant before? Have the restaurant sent you a check? Do they still send you a check? So what this means is that I'm not saying that you need to be paid every time you refer. What I am saying is that if you find something that works and you refer it and a person acts on it and likes it and continues to use it, should you not get part of that economic transaction right there? Should it go to the billionaires in Arkansas, the Walmart family? Should it go to the big target corporate people in Minneapolis? Should it go to Jeff in Amazon? I mean, I'm a fan of Jeff, to be honest. He's created 40,000 millionaires and Jeff's doing fine, but why can't some of that revenue that goes that direction, why can't it come back to me, to Stacy, to Luke, to Glady? So you get my point. So that's essentially the model. Here's a couple of examples I found just from the last week of people, just on social media, just on social media using network marketing. So my friend on the left here, she was highlighting this Brandon Sanderson book, Rhythm of War, okay? Not my thing, not my thing, but what is she doing? She is saying, I don't know who needs to hear this, but Brandon Sanderson's new book comes out November the 17th. She is marketing that gentleman's book for him. Now, I don't believe she's going to get a kickback from Brandon or from the publisher. She's marketing that book for him, okay? Second one, look at the recommendation in the middle. This person is looking for a dentist, okay? Somebody gets right back to her, and I've blocked out the names there. Forgive me, you can see Kimberly Green's name. I apologize. The point here is that they are using a network to try and establish credibility. So I don't know how this situation in the middle here ended up. My guess is that... The person looking for the recommendation took the recommendation from Miss Green and called Matt Rivera's office, called the Collins Family Dentistry in Denver, North Carolina. I don't know if there was a kickback here or if there was a financial incentive. It doesn't matter. What matters is the concept that people are looking for word of mouth, referrals, and trust constantly. And the last one is a bit more blatant. And forgive me if you can't see the verbiage. I just realize it's kind of small. This was um, Peloton Company, you know, the new exercise bike, treadmill people. This is Peloton using a review of one of their users to say how great they are. You know, they are saying thank you to, it was not me, but they're saying thank you, Martin Conway, for the solid review of Peloton's interactive newest product. Basically, they, Peloton are saying, this guy thinks we're cool, you should think we're cool too. And here's a nice picture. And it gets 295 likes and 12 comments. My point, Network marketing is occurring all over the place. And I am not a believer that every single time you refer somebody, you need, to, <laughs> you need to be doing it with a financial lens. What I am saying is if you find something that aligns with your values, that serves you and is part of the greater good, and you want to build an income producing asset outside of your day, your career, full-time career, isogenic to something you should look at. Almost done here, a couple of minutes. So some questions here, and I'm not gonna belabor these too much, but I will touch on them. Um, and these are just more rhetorical questions that help, have helped me with the deprogramming up over the last few months and moving away from doing everything as, a mind, as an employee. What do I need to do? What's my boss want? When my next phone call? Trying to de-shed and deprogram that and move much more into this 
this entrepreneur mindset. So a couple of questions here. If you ever see a before and after picture from Walmart or Target because of the nutrition they push, please let me know because I never send one. Isogenics, you, they're everywhere. You can't go online without finding one from Isogenics. Okay, there's a reason for that. Number two, the economic power of a family unit. I talked earlier that my family in a month spent eight, $850. So what's that? Just uh, around 10, 10 and a half thousand dollars per year on our um, grocery bill for the six of us. We have shifted that money. Now that goes into our rice, 200, 220 of that goes, in, goes into isogenics each month. And we're beginning to build our revenue and build our collateral and our, our asset in there. Um, I talked about how often do you refer a product and a service? My guess is that everyone on this line has done it three or four times today. And we didn't even realize restaurant, food, dentists, go to this store, Go to that person. Don't trust that person. We're always referring and leaning on the opinions of other people. Um, the cost of entry with the pride and the ego. And somebody once told me, I was told that you know network marketing was awful. And I actually tried it 10 or 15 years ago and had a great experience for a long time. And then I, I decided to step away from it. Not because the company was bad. I decided to step away. So uh, I think this is a safe place. I found the culture to be wonderful. And I would encourage you to if you can move past that pride and ego and start this for 30 days um, and trust your gut, don't trust what somebody else says um, in the sense of trying it. Um, I talked about the system. If you could create the perfect system, what would that look like? Would it be, you know, 40 hours a day, uh, 40 hours a week for 40 years and then living off of 40% of your income and rolling over into the sunset there for retirement? Or would it be, I'm going to create a system where I get paid every Monday because I'm helping people with their nutrition. I'm helping people with their mindset. I'm helping people pay an extra bill. They can send their kids to gymnastics, to soccer, to lacrosse or whatever it is, or I can pay down debt. Um, what vehicles are you currently using to build an asset? If it's just the day job or if it's just the stock market, is that the right thing for you? I don't know. I'm not a financial advisor. What I do know, what I do know, is that redirecting the income that I'm already spending on food away from Walmart, away from Target, and over to Isogenics, I'm consuming quality nutrition, and I'm building an income producing asset over here that as I refer people in and they act on it, I get a slice of that income which would otherwise go to another company or to the, the millionaires and the billionaires in Arkansas. And then the last question, do you wanna build an income producing asset while feeding yourself and feeding your family with quality nutrition? Every other question on this slide here is an open-ended question. This is a straight yes, no question. You either do or you do not. If you do not, then I'm grateful that you are here, but this is not the place for you. If you are interested in building an income producing asset, Isogenics is something that I would encourage you to look into and talk to the person who referred you to the call today. All right. So I talked about a couple of things. Number one, an overview of the business. Hope I did that for you. And number two, I hope I kind of prodded you and poked you a tiny bit just to reflect on current behaviors and take action, which is consistent with the best version of yourself. Not the, not the, not the version that talks, not the person that thinks, the person that actually acts. Um, and I've learned that for me, I'm best when I'm actually acting, uh, I'm taking action and moving forward as opposed to thinking it. I tend to overthink things, but I found for me, my best version is when I'm acting on information, I'm taking those steps into discomfort and I'm trying things. When I do that, that's my best version. So I will wrap up. I am grateful to each of you for jumping on. I wish it was more of a two-way call, but uh, if you need me for anything, please let me know, but please reach out to the person who referred you to the call tonight and uh, they will answer any questions. And I wish each of you a good night and thanks a lot for your time. Take care.